Hello everyone, welcome to the spring summer semester uh, for the course um, uh, 1207, uh, Quantitative Management Decision Making. Uh, let me go through multiple points that uh, might help you. I uh, hope uh, you go through it uh, even after yeah, you looked at it every now and then. So I'm going to give you a welcome note. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the semester. I might really introduce myself very quick. Uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, the syllabus and the important issues, um, grading policy and uh, my IT lab. I have to go through this point clearly. And then I will finalize this part um, um, about some logistical issues in order to make your life easier and uh, the study, your study and learning experience easier. And then we're going to go through uh, the first handouts of this week one. Um, um, yeah, let me uh, first, I, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, welcome to the in this semester. Uh, I hope you will enjoy it. Uh, uh, definitely, I would have loved to meet you in person, but uh, uh, this special um, uh, section, uh, your section is uh, designed and developed in a way to be more in uh, asynchronous or mixed between synchronous and asynchronous uh, remotely. Uh, that means physically we will not meet. Uh, maybe we can if we see each other uh, at the campus if you are around. Um, so I hope you enjoy it and um, I will make my, uh, I do my best to, yeah, to, to learn something from this course. Yeah, let me give you a very quick uh, intro about myself, especially the, um, the biography. I'm an engineer um, from Egypt. Uh, at that time when I graduated from systems and biomedical and I worked at the Cal University after that. So I got my uh, Bachelor of Science and Master of Science from Cal University, Faculty of Engineering, uh, from the same department. And then I went to Germany for my PhD. It was purely engineering. And then um, I came back to Egypt and worked for some time in different um, areas, uh, in technology and in, uh, business intelligence, uh, in, in artificial intelligence at that time. Uh, and more and more. So uh, currently I'm working uh, remotely uh, with the Kuwaiti program uh, and acting as academic dean uh, for Master School of Management, which is MSM, uh, that has um, uh, the main campus in uh, the Netherlands. Uh, and I go back and forth. So I'm adjunct faculty at uh, this university, University of Maastricht. Um, and uh, currently I'm working as well as uh, part-time faculty um, here in Algoma as well as you cannot see it from my picture probably uh, but uh, I'm also uh, kind of uh, working at the uh, University of Toronto. So, um, uh, the next point is about how this semester works at, or will work actually as I mentioned it will be a mix between asynchronous and synchronous mode that means that sometimes I'm gonna um, uh, conduct a live session. It depends. So it's not really clear now because it was uh, I, we were all informed that uh, this uh, section will be delivered uh, in a distance education mode uh, rather than physically. So I was not really um, uh, the, the, the whole uh, schedule that I put was based on physical uh, presence, but I will adjust that so you will know exactly when are we going to meet uh, uh, life, but most of the time uh, you might really uh, follow along on the model and LMS to find all important information. So kind of assignment, when the assignment will be delivered and uh, what kind of assignment you need to deliver, uh, the quizzes, uh, the tutorials, uh, the handouts, the videos, everything, you will see it on LMS. So try to make uh, this LMS, the model, page of this section your own front end and uh, the, the, the starting point always if you want to know what's going on in uh, in this course specifically for your section so every week i will try to share with you what kind of instructions uh, i will write instructions to let you know what kind of task you need to do um, whether you have a quiz or assignment or tutorial or some other things to do 
so uh, this is a very good thing because you can plan your time accordingly and your life will be easier so let me jump in very quick to the syllabus that detailed syllabus is already on uh, the lms so i would suggest that you have to read it it's actually not suggestions so i'm asking you to read it very carefully because there are a couple of things you need to know uh, what are your uh, uh, roles in this course and uh, what do you expect and um, one of the most important points you will uh, find in the syllabus is basically what kind of textbooks uh, that you need it's only one in this semester uh, but this book basically as you can see in front of you it's about business statistics and i'm going to uh, cover the first seven chapters uh, nevertheless if you buy the whole book uh, this the rest of the book will be um, uh, uh, kind of covered uh, in another course uh, 2506 that will be delivered by one of our colleagues so it, it means if you buy this book you will cover two courses if you are planning to attend this 2506 sometime soon so this is probably another important uh, piece of information that you need to uh, go through it very carefully let me go through uh, each point uh, quickly because um, it will affect the whole uh, expectation when it comes to grading as you can see here, there are one, two, three, four, five, six components of assessment um, that uh, you will be, um, you, you have to be at, at pay attention for each uh, component. The first component, we call it class quizzes, and uh, you will go through five, or I'm going to offer five quizzes. All of them will be online, um, um, but um, in, in total, they count for 10% of the course and um, i will be giving uh, although i'm going to give five uh, quizzes i will take the best four so you might really easily get the 10 if you missed one or you did not well in one of them then still you have chance to get the 10 points so i would suggest that you go and write all of them maybe for some reason you will not really make it for one uh, at least one uh, or at maximum i mean one then it's not, not a big problem because uh, you can still have uh, the opportunity to get the full mark in this component. The second component is called My IT Lab, and probably you had uh, you heard about it before because probably last semester you, you went through similar things, but in different topics. I think this topic this time is going to be about Excel and maybe Access, um, and this account for 20%. It's very, as you can see, it's one-fifth of the whole course, which is really, really very big portion here. Uh, relatively with the other components uh, the most important part is you need to look at beneath this table you will find all information not only here in, on this slide but also on the lms the only person that can answer your questions or solve your problem uh, his name is kevin hauk and this is his email he shared with me uh, this, his syllabus and they put it on the lms so you have it already there in a PDF format, you have the login link, you have uh, all credentials, so pay attention to that very well. The second component, uh, or the third, in fact, uh, there are individual case study one, individual case study two, and for each one of these, you need to deliver what we call it memo or executive summary. Uh, both, uh, we're gonna talk about memo and executive summary during the semester, so you don't need really to bother yourself now. Uh, but definitely you will have to be careful because this each one has 10%. And for some reason, some students, they take it for granted and they get really very low grade here, although it's really not big issue. It's really easy part. So it's uh, you can get um, the maximum point in this component. There will be a third case study, but in group, not individual. In this case, you will have a presentation and the presentation will be live. That means you have to basically know when the presentation will be. So to prepare yourself, you will be online. That means we're gonna go through Google Meet and each group is going to present uh, the work. Of course, you can be together in one room or you can be everywhere, but you have, as a team, you have to uh, come together at the same time as a schedule. So the schedule will be shared with you in a, a later point of time. Last point which is 35%, which is really, really very important because it's a final exam. The final exam, we don't know yet whether the final exam will be uh, based on written exam. Yeah, in your case, it has been, to be, to be honest, it's be online. So I don't know, I'm, I'm waiting the instructions of the university and the faculty of uh, 
business and economics to tell us what will be the policy because they change the policy every semester based on the previous experience. So uh, be prepared to whatever the mode will be so uh, for this component. The most important things irrespective of how this course or this exam will be delivered, the most important point is basically to, to know that uh, it, it counts for 35%. Uh, which means, um, yeah, uh, it's almost one third of the whole course. It's okay, but this is not the issue. The issue is uh, that in order to uh, pass the whole course, the whole course, you need to pass the exam. That means you have to get 35, 50% uh, of the 35, which basically is 17.5 out of 35 in order to pass the whole course. So you might really get the best grade ever. In this, in this 65 points here, but still, if you fail, unfortunately, you will fail the whole course if you fail the final exam. So pay attention and be careful, because I had cases this semester and previous semester, the student did well in every component, but they didn't do well in the final exam, and they failed the final exam, and they had to fail as well the whole course. So I don't want you to be one of them. So some logistical issues, it's kind of summary. Uh, you are responsible for reading every single thing I'm going to write on the LMS because this is the only way we communicate uh, and you will be informed um, hopefully accurately and precisely and promptly about what you need to do. All quizzes are online and are fixed fixed in terms of dates. So you, if you go now to uh, the, the LMS, you will know when quiz one, when quiz three, when quiz five and so on. So um, you can accordingly know uh, when is uh, everything and this is what I had to do in order to make your life easier. Group presentation will be live as I mentioned and uh, you will be uh, informed with the exact timing but the date it's already known. So if you go to the LMS you will know when the group presentation will be. Um, uh, attend all tutorials live and attendance will be recorded so you have to be careful and even the tutorial dates and timing already uh, presented on the LMS, so you will know it. So go back again to LMS. When you communicate with me, if anything is not really clear on the LMS for some reason, hopefully not, but if it happens, you probably will decide to send me an email. That's no problem. In order to make my response uh, quick to you, because I know that you might really go through some difficulties for any reason, so try to make my life easier here to communicate promptly to you. When you're writing me an email, uh, try to put in your signature your name, the section, obviously S. You have to do S here, otherwise I don't know who you are, even if you give me your name or ID. I'm teaching four sections, and then it will be tough to look for your name uh, an old uh, database that I have and probably I will find your name and as always at the last uh, file. So please make it easy for me. Uh, having a student ID will make it even quicker. So please do that. Then good luck in this case. So uh, let us uh, go ahead and uh, discuss what's going to happen in this course. But nevertheless, I want to go back to the group presentation or all case study if I go back. maybe. Yeah, this is maybe I will go back to talk about um, or actually let me say that um, before going through um, the, the the handouts of uh, of this week, uh, which is uh, chapter one, two and three, um, everything related to group presentation, case study, uh, hopefully written and uh, discussed on the LMS. So if you have any question, you can send me an email. Um, definitely. Um, Based on that, uh, let me go ahead here and talk about uh, the content of this uh, chapter and all handouts are already in uh, on a certain folder on week one. Okay, so this is, uh, we're going to talk now uh, very quick about the meaning of statistics and why we need statistics. So this is how it works. So what's the statistics? Statistic is a way of reasoning uh, along with a collection of tools and methods designed to help us to understand the world. That's interesting because statistic, um, I know it's not everyone likes the term, but to be honest, nowadays in this life, statistic became the most important aspect. And if you even, uh, we are witnessing not only the best time in terms of technology advancement, 
and recently what everyone is talking about AI and uh, GPT or ChatGPT and more uh, and if you think about it it's all um, based on statistics um, and probability so statistic and probabilities are the most important concept in our life irrespective of what we are doing or what we are what we like and dislike in the end statistics and probability became uh, the only tools for us to 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 judge to predict to assess make decisions solve problems uh, and, and communicate and so on so you need basically to understand the meaning of statistics and why we need it um, maybe the term looks like very old term but to be honest it's really really very current and recent uh, there are definitely um, uh, challenges when it comes to statistics and statistics is a way to uh, to also to analyze data whether this is small this is large re real time time series irrespective of what kind of data we have in the end became very important the most important thing in this workflow of data analysis is not only to push the button and get some statistics like average or standard deviation the question is what does it mean how these things will help us to make decisions solve a problem so in this case hopefully this course will help you to make an interpretation you will work as a translator of numbers from numbers to actions from numbers to reality and also back from reality to numbers and so on. So um, statistic has been used in many fields, in many disciplines, not only in business, to be honest, it's everywhere in healthcare, in environment, in economics, in, in politics, uh, in every single thing. Psychology is one of the best, sociology. So wherever you go, wherever you think, wherever you study, whatever you are talking about, it's always statistic is inside. So uh, definitely you can find it inside any organization in marketing, accounting, finance, supply chain, human resource, and so on. Um, definitely we will always be interested to how really uh, make the best presentation uh, and representation of the data in order to help decision makers to take decisions, take actions, and solve problems. So we will go through that during the whole semester. It's really not a difficult course, to be honest. Uh, um, from chapter one to seven, they are very light, very simple. We call them descriptive statistics. So statistic, as I mentioned, uh, it has two sides and facts. It's maybe not written now, but uh, basically uh, it has uh, two um, uh, main tracks. One is called descriptive statistic and the other one is called inferential. And some, um, and nowadays people call it descriptive analytics and predictive analytics, but they have the same meaning as the previous uh, terms. So the main terms are descriptive and inferential. Uh, and in this course, we're going to really only uh, focus on the descriptive part, which is basically how to describe what we see in front of us. Inferential or slash predictive is how can we use the description to predict and forecast what's going to happen in future. Unfortunately, I say that our course is not about future. The, our course is about the history, about the past. So that means descriptive is concerned about what happened in the past. Inferential slash predictive is concerning about what's going to happen in future. Yeah, this is uh, um, the, but before going through the analysis of data, you always need to know what our data is. What is data and why, why, why we call it data and what type of data, what scale of data. Uh, what kind of uh, data and sort of data. They are very, very important technical terminologies you need to get acquainted with in order to understand anyone in this field when they talk about data. They're going to use um, words like nominal or interval or maybe time series. Um, then your job is to not to ask a question what does it mean uh, you need to get engaged and you know immediately what does it mean so try to pay attention to the terminologies because it's like language i call it the language of data so data has also language so you need to learn the language of data so we're going to go through multiple um, concept issues topics in this chapter number two which will help you a lot to um, understand the next and uh, any other chapters in, in this work.
If you look at this, uh, this is a kind of an example of data with no context at all. If you pay attention to the table in this, I don't know even if we can call it a table. Um, it's really very um, confusing uh, bunch of, uh, I don't know how can I call it, items or elements or points that are not even organized or structured in a logical way. But if you pay a little bit of attention, say, oh, I see here Ontario, oh, there is a province, or maybe a name, name and there is Nova Scotia, oh, that's it. Then there is, an, there is something should be bringing them together to call them province. Oh, there are names here of persons, so why not to call it client or customer, or maybe employee, and so on and so forth. So it looks like there are really the, the data, it looks like we have data, but they are not organized in a logical way. It doesn't make any sense. That's purely unstructured. In any system, you cannot work with this. So you need to reorganize these kind of things into different, uh, in, in, in major uh, groups or, or sections or segment. One of them is called respondent, uh, subject or participant, experimental unit. Those are the, the, the main um, points. So that means our table that we, ha that we want to uh, work with should have some, it's like spreadsheet, like any table, it's two-dimensional table, has rows and has columns. So we always call the rows as cases and columns, we call them characteristics or we call them attributes and the best term for our course, we call them variables. So these variables could be a name of the respondent, name of the subject matter or the participant of this experiment or the experimental unit. So you can see a respondent could be individual who answer a survey. If we have a survey to collect data, per, um, the subject or participant is the person who, whom the experiment is being uh, performed on. And as well as you have the experimental unit, which means maybe the website, maybe you are studying website and we want to see the, how people perceive the website in terms of looks and uh, look and feel or some other things. Now, if we want really to organize everything that the table that you uh, saw before in, uh, in one of the slides uh, can be organized or reorganized in this logical way. You can see very decent table, very simple spreadsheet format. It's uh, called rectangular format. As you can see, every rows, we call them cases. So every case, so you can see here, it's uh, the first row here, which is uh, the purchase order number, the name of the customer, the ship which province will be shipped to, uh, the price of the product, the area code, whether it will be gift or not. And this is another number, uh, maybe it has to do with the product itself. So in, 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 in other ways, every row and every record, we call, it, we call them cases from now on. And uh, this is how we call them. And the columns, we call them variables. So we have a variable called name, we have a variable called purchase order number, we have a variable called ship to province and uh, another variable is called price so the vertical axis is the variables but the horizontal are the cases or the rows okay so um what are data so as you can see we have this, the slide you will find out immediately that um, it is really um, uh, you will have a table for maybe shipment but uh, if we look really for how each company is dealing with its own data so each company will have always what we call it uh, customer table and product table and this is customer table which you have unique uh, appearance in this table for each customer so the customer will appear only once uh, like your uh, appearance and the in the at the registrar office you appeared once you have your id number of student you have uh, the, your name, uh, maybe you have some other demographics here, but it's only one single, uh, you have only one single unique record and at the University of Algoma. And here for companies, each customer will have, when the customer registered uh, and subscribed to, um, on, on the company website or anything, and, or maybe physically, they always fill in an application, whether in a banking uh, sector or even a telecom or even in hospital. You always have one record, hopefully. So uh, this is the customer table. There is also items or product table. In our case here is a product, but in, our, in, in Algoma will be courses. So each course will have also one single 
uh, appearance. Uh, so like section like AD, ADMN1207 is a course. So the course will appear only once uh, because it has only one name and so on. Whether this course is got, it's de being delivered in different sections, that's a different story. Uh, but each section is basically as well is unique. So that means section S, I am the only one who's teaching uh, section S, no one else, but section A, I'm not the one. So it looks like it's even if you link the, the course code with the section, you have a unique appearance. And this is what you always need to do it when you develop and design a system at the company. The most important thing later on is what we call it the third table, which is the transactional table. And you can see there is a relationship between this number because this number was related to the customer number. In courses uh, semester, your name will appear here. Uh, the date of the semester, uh, your ID number, and here the course code. So you, you can see that in, in transactional data or a transaction table at the university, your name will appear multiple times because you are attending multiple courses during the same semester. Um, the course section S will be appeared multiple times in this table because uh, it's being attended by number of students and each student will appear here for the same course. So you can see transactional is going fast, is growing very quick and every semester will grow more and more, uh, but the, the number of students will be the same if no enrollment, and if then same courses will not change much because the university will not add every semester new courses. The course catalog is already defined and it doesn't really change much, and often student change uh, because there are some students leave the university because they finish, or a new student come in, so uh, the students and the customers in this case table will increase accordingly. However, in order to go through this transaction table, you need to have uh, the unique identification of the customer, unique identification of the course. And this transactional data, to be honest, is the most important, uh, let me say it, uh, treasure for any uh, organization. Why? Because you see it's uh, everything is dated here. That means you, you are capturing what's happening uh, on not only daily basis, sometimes hourly basis, or sometimes on the minute basis, it depends on the nature of the business. So this transaction data uh, table will always grow and growing uh, always. So, uh, and from this one, you can build a lot of dashboards, analytics, and this is where we want to describe and uh, go through the descriptive analytics, sometimes in, analyt uh, in predictive analytics. So um, another important aspect we need to talk about is the type of data, the type of verbs, these columns. Uh, we have two types usually. Um, one is called categorical variable, the other one we call qualitative variables. Um, sorry, um, it's qua categorical, sometimes we call it qualitative, but the second one it's called quantitative, but sometimes we call it numerical values. So that means we have only two. So uh, in categorical variable, uh, that means categories, uh, and the, the minimum number of categories you can have for any virus is two, right? It's binary, like zero, one, success or failure, yes or no, default or not default, uh, and so on and so forth. So this is binary, and it's very important. And this slide will show you the difference between two different scales underneath the categorical data. So if you go ahead and read these four questions very quick, let me read them for you. Do you invest in the stock market? The possible answer is yes or no. What kind of advertising do you use, whether you are using magazines or internet or direct mailing? I would recommend this course to another student. Uh, this is a statement, so this doesn't require uh, the respondent to agree or not to agree, but there is a scale here. Uh, how satisfied are you with this product? Also, uh, it's being expected that the customer will uh, answer uh, not yes or no, because the question is not written in yes or no, uh, expecting yes or no answer. But if you look at the possible answer for these four questions, you will find something interesting. In the first two questions, if you shuffle the answer, like writing no first, and the second or the second questions, you write internet first and direct mail second and magazine 
at the, uh, at the end, it will not confuse the respondent. The respondent will be okay with shuffling this. If you shuffle them and doesn't make any sense or the order has no meaning, then we call them categorical data with nominal scale. Nevertheless, if you look at the second two, you cannot shuffle them. You cannot write slightly disagree first, and then you write strongly agree, and then in the last you write strongly disagree. So if you shuffle this, you confuse your customer or your respondent. The same for the fourth questions. If order is important like these two questions, then we call them categorical variable with ordinal scale. So this is the thing here. So I'm gonna go further here because there are some examples here and it's easy to understand. Uh, the only way to analyze categorical data is basically to summarize them. It's kind of counting them. How many people say yes, how many people say no, and this is all what you need to do. Um, and you might really end up by having an absolute count or maybe percentage. We're gonna talk about more and more about how to analyze categorical data when we come to chapter four. So I'm not going to go through every single details about how to analyze data categorical because we're going to talk about it very comprehensively when we come to chapter four, which basically uh, next week, uh, week two. Um, identifier, uh, it's another variable. Many, many people talk about it, but the, you cannot count identifier. Identifier is not numbers. So your ID at the university, if you look at it, it looks like numbers, but you cannot sum it. You cannot take the average of two, three students have different numbers and you say, okay, let me take the average of the ID. The ID, it means it's a unique identifier. That means this number that you have is only you have this number, like email. Email also can be considered interesting identifier. We always need it, but we don't analyze it. What does it mean? Well, just not even counting. If you count them, it means you are unique numbers, just to know how many items you have in this data set, right? But it doesn't really make any, uh, an, uh, uh, many things in when it comes to analysis but we need it because if you have uh, if you go back to the transaction data uh, that we build up for any university or any organization you find out that in order to know uh, that this transaction is basically uh, this specific transaction uh, concerned this customer who has this customer id and who bought this product with this unique id so id we need it in order to make link or rel relation between two tables. And that's why we call it relational database or relational relational data set. So identifier is basically uh, are not variable to analyze. This is very, the second type of our data, we call them, uh, yeah, we call them, yeah, here, no, it's actually, it's this slide means it's, it's, it's repeating what I have been saying about the different uh, types and scale, nominal or ordinal. So, and this is uh, another type which is numerical data. And in numerical data we have, or quantitative data, we have two scales. So like in, in qualitative data categorical, we have two scales, nominal and ordinal, we discussed that. But when it comes to not categorical, it will be obviously numerical. Uh, like any numbers uh, that really, um, uh, re represent facts or something uh, or anything, we call them numerical, since they are not categorical. And under uh, under this cat uh, type of data, we have two scales as well, one called interval and another one called ratio. Uh, the, the things that will um, differentiate between interval and ratio scale is the meaning of zero. So if the zero means something like uh, temperature in Celsius, not in Fahrenheit, Zero, it means, uh, in this case, uh, for uh, degree in Celsius, it means freezing uh, the temperature, which is, it's there, physically it's there. Physics works with zero temperature. Uh, so in this case, we call it interval. But if the zero doesn't make any sense, like if I say this building has height of zero, zero doesn't make any sense in height. So in this case, height is ratio. So you have to make sure that you understand the difference between interval and ratio. It's only the zero meaning. Um, we have another type of data um, that's being uh, like transaction data. Um, they are really related and dependent on time. Uh, so there are uh, data, we call it cross-sectional data. And cross-sectional data doesn't make any uh, difference in terms of time. So you can collect your data, but the time is not important at all. Like uh, like if you collect data about um, enrollment of student in a, 
in a in a course or something does mean when and at what time yeah there is a deadline yes but uh, it doesn't make any difference if you uh, subscribed or enrolled today or tomorrow or yesterday or a week after you are already in and the time doesn't make any sense if the time doesn't make any sense then our data we call it cross-sectional but if the time is important like stock price and uh, profit and revenue every week or every month or every year then because the data is related to time and time is an important factor or variable then we call it time series data and time series data or cross-section data will be analyzed differently sometimes there are common things in analysis but each one has its own different uh, different tools of analysis uh, we also have another terminologies like uh, primary data and secondary data I think you understand the difference, but let me go through it uh, through them very quick. Primary data, it's oh let, let me let me start with the secondary data. Imagine that you are doing any study and you want some data, and the data you looked up on the Statistic Canada, and you want to maybe develop a business plan for uh, an interesting entrepreneurial uh, journey you want to go um, uh, into it. Uh, but in, in maybe in food industry, uh, then you'll say, okay, let me understand uh, how the Canadian market works. So maybe the, th the first thing comes to your mind is to look up uh, on the website of uh, Statistic Canada and you will find the rich data there. Any information or any data you get from any source like uh, Canada Statistic, we call it secondary data because it's, it doesn't belong to you. You are not the one who basically collect the data you just uh, got them and you have to write the, the source as well it's like a citation uh, based on ethical uh, or uh, mm -hmm. yeah ethical behavior you have always to attribute uh, this data or to um, to attribute to the main source but if you find out that statistic kind of doesn't give you the data that you want and you want the, to ask uh, basically uh, customers based on, on on a survey data then this is this data belongs to you so you are the one who is collecting this data in this case we call it primary data yeah i, I think this is it uh, for um, this part you can go through the rest the rest we i have been talking about them but in different format so there is nothing really um uh, will be different from what i have been saying so i want you guys to look at this uh, um, handouts very carefully and uh, I'm going to talk about uh, the next handouts in another uh, video. Thank you and take